you can just see the soil like it's just devastatingly dry with a drought it's a slow agonizing torture because the, the mother nature gives you a little bit then takes it away god there's nothing worse than say 90 percent chance of raining to get nothing this is really bad what we try to do is create a plan that can withstand the drought for a longer period of time until more rain comes that's the dream that's the dream and i think we are very close to it for me personally, this is definitely the worst I've ever seen it. This is about our seventh year of drought. It's just been getting progressively worse and worse. The drought in southern Alberta has repercussions all across the country. Alberta accounts for a quarter of Canada's total farm revenues. And farming employs millions of Canadians and represents 7% of GDP. Here in southern Alberta, several counties declared states of emergency this summer because of the drought. Is there anything that can be done? What does this mean for the future of farming? Deanna Heather wants to show me the canola crop in one of the counties that declared a state of emergency. Okay, so what's this? We are in a canola field right now. It was fully seeded, but this is gonna, going to amount to nothing up here. It's, I mean, this isn't even worth running your combine over, obviously. The canola crops are failing in southern Alberta is a big deal. Canola is Canada's most valuable crop, worth $20 billion a year. Like, look, look at this. Do you, have you ever seen it this dry? Not this dry, no. The moisture at this point is so far down in the soil that there's nothing for a plant to draw from at the moment. It's a mess. It's a mess. Is that accurate? It is very accurate. What the farmers are going through is devastating, you know? Can we, can we give them something that they can look forward to? And they can be at peace, thinking even if the, the rain fails, we have a crop that can actually withstand another two weeks, three weeks without a problem. Dr. Marcus Samuel thinks he's found the solution that the farmers need. He says he's close to developing a drought-tolerant canola plant. He's been working on it in his lab at the University of Calgary for 15 years. What motivates me, keeps me excited is the chance to do something special, which is create all these uh, crops for the future. We have to adapt with the changing environment, changing climates, changing stress conditions, increasing global population. We have to figure out a way to sustain yield. I think that's the core value that we are passionate about here. Let's get this done too. Next. Marcus believes his research is crucial for the future of farming. And he tells me he's made a breakthrough. We found a special pathway that is conserved in all crops that we can actually tweak to make them drought resistant. So that plants have that built-in crop insurance that'll allow them to sustain uh, prolonged periods of absence of water or lack of water until, until they see the rain. Marcus has discovered that tweaking a plant's hormones is the key to making them drought tolerant. This is how the gene editing process starts. We take uh, small plantlets and, uh, and cut them up and a single cell is actually modified to buy a whole bunch of hormones and made it into a full plant. Marcus explains that plants have a hormone that allows them to grow. But when they hit a drought, another hormone kicks in and shuts the plant down. So what we are trying to do is tweak these two hormones so that when it's hit with drought, they're ready to actually withstand that drought. Neil, what are we looking at here? Marcus believes his drought-tolerant canola plants will last about two weeks longer without water than what's being planted today. I mean, that could be the difference between a good crop and total failure. Have, have you thought about speeding up this process of screening them for drought tolerance? Let's say you have 15 plants, you move them to soil. Is there any way yeah, that I mean, we can speed up the process? For sure, we could actually start doing that. Oh, that'd be nice, yeah. Neil Hickerson is a graduate student in the lab. He says this summer's drought in southern Alberta has opened his eyes. This is now. This is absolutely, you know, putting some urgency behind a lot of the work we do. We've always been interested in this aspect of making these plants resilient and, and making sure that they can survive. But right now we have, you know, real world application of everything that we do in this lab. It could be a benefit uh, to, to everyone out there right now. An hour south of the lab, I meet Leroy Newman, one of the farmers affected by the drought. This is my dad who grew up here. My grandfather lived there and my great-grandfather lived here. Now my brother's kids are living there. Leroy has about 4,000 acres near the town of Blackie. 
One of his main crops is canola. So I'll show you what a flower blast is. This heat dome came in and, and uh, it went to 35 to 38 and then the wind started blowing and it was just like a hair dryer when he walked outside. Oh boy. Man, this could have been such a good crop. It's just starting to flower blast off here. So these, each one of these flowers make a pod, right? And this is a pod here. Okay, I see, yeah. And it's then, like a bean almost. Yeah, and then it's full of seeds. And see the little seed there? Yeah. So they're all drying up. That ain't gonna make 10 bushels. If the canola seeds are dry, you can't get any oil from them. And the crop basically has no value. So what would a drought tolerant canola plant mean for Leroy? This year I would have went for a drought tolerant if we could have, if we had something like that for sure because we were coming in with no moisture for two to three years of substantial we have no subsoil moisture so these drought tolerants would survive in that and it would be it would be awesome. So what's your situation? You you look at this. What what do you what do you see? Right now, like there's there it's it's dying. Like look at these leaves. They're just well, right? They're, they should be crisp and like a rhubarb. There should be big, big leaves that are fresh and crisp. It's too late for this year's crop, but Dr. Marcus Samuel brings out the drought tolerant canola plant he believes will change things. This plant is the result of all the research and experimentation he's ever done. So these are our gene edited plants. As you can see, uh, compared to a normal plant, you can see the height difference between these two plants, right? So this is the normal That's one. That's the normal plant. This, this is, is our gene edited plant. These are shorter, but look at the number of pods. They have equal number of pods. So they're going to use less water be, by being shorter to produce the same number of pods. That means their water use efficiency is very high. So it's going to uh, withstand the drought much longer too. That's why this is such a special plant. Marcus's plant grows well here in the greenhouse, but he warns me it still needs to be tested out in the fields, and that will take time. When you, when you hold this in your hand, yes. I mean, what do you think about? I think about the, all the hard work that's gone into it, 15, 20 years of hard work to get to this stage, and I can't wait for the farmers to use it. I want to see it in the ground being used in the field by the farmers.